the PARPs, the PARP inhibitors, uh, impacted the landscape of ovarian cancer treatment, your perspective as of today? So certainly when we're talking about recurrent setting and we're talking about treatment, um, I sometimes view it as a chess match, meaning I sort of have to be thinking about what am I planning now, but what am I doing three and four moves down the road if treatment works, doesn't work? What are my next moves and how do I get there? And when I think about the disease in that way of that chess match, certainly PARP inhibitors have given me many more options of how I can you know, deploy them for the patient, whether it is treatment, you know, because the patient has either an inherited or a somatic BRCA mutation, or whether it's patients had a great response to their platinum-based therapy for their recurrence, and now I want to try to maintain their remission, maintain their response, and then use the PARP inhibitor in that context. And so we also have to remember, though, that when we employ these maintenance strategies or treatment strategies, there are side effects. Even though it's a pill, uh, it still has chemotherapeutic side effects, and those can be profound, and I've seen that in patients with you know, profound anemia from their PARP inhibitor or a profound decrease in their platelet count. So even though we sometimes underestimate the potential for side effects because it's a pill, because they in general are well tolerated, we still have to be vigilant for side effects. So this term maintenance versus treatment is relatively new in, in, in ovarian cancer and certainly in gynecologic malignancy as well. Do you have a, a sort of a simple explanation for, uh, for, for patients and their families? What's the difference between treatment and maintenance? Sure, maintenance, you know, simplistically is following a therapy, whether it's a continuation of one or a combination, you know, one of the drugs that the patient's been on. But the goal of maintenance is, if you will, simply trying to maintain the response, maintain the remission that's been achieved to keep the disease in check, if you will. We know that there are still, you know, that if we um, can do that, we can hopefully prolong what we call progression-free survival or, or at least... Uh, prolong the interval from when a patient would have to switch to a different regimen. So maintenance is we're building upon a response we've achieved and we're trying to maintain where we are, if you will. I don't know if that makes sense or that makes sense to you, Anya, versus yes, it does. treatment is, uh, you know, we have a recurrence of the cancer based upon a CT scan, based upon patient symptoms, and we want to treat now to see if we can make symptoms better, to see if we can make the disease smaller, that type of uh, Thing where we'd look at scans for that purpose. So Justin, how has the uh, availability of the PARP inhibitors uh, influenced your conversation about, uh, about maintenance with patients? Well, one of the key benefits is that the patients don't have to return to the cancer center for an infusion every three weeks or every month. They take the medication on their own. We still do follow-up blood work. We still do follow-up monitoring, but it's a much more convenient, if you will, cycle of treatment because it's tablets that the patient can take at home and her own. And so having that as an option as opposed to having to come back for infusions and sort of uh, the uh, process around that really changes how we think about maintenance from a tolerability standpoint and a feasibility standpoint. You know, when we talk about maintenance, okay, the goal is to maintain this remission to extend the progression-free, hopefully the overall survival but we want to do it in such a way that the patient still has a good quality of life. So if a patient, you know, travels, wants to do those types of things, but has to return to the center frequently for infusions, that makes maintenance much more laborious, much more, you know, toxic for their quality of life. But having a PARP inhibitor, which is an oral medication, is a great way to now employ maintenance therapy with a little less disruption on a person's lifestyle and quality of life. One of the uh, uh, parts of the... Uh sort of the definition um, uh, at a scientific level, and certainly from an FDA approval level um, related to maintenance, was this idea of platinum sensitivity. So what does that mean in, in terms, you know, the patients and their families are listening, what does it mean platinum sensitive, then uh, maintenance with a PARP inhibitor make, make sense? Sure, so platinum sensitive, there's a couple ways it can be defined, but in a simple way, it means that the patient responds or their cancer is sensitive to platinum-based therapy, so that when we treat somebody for recurrence of their cancer with a platinum-based regimen, it means that they have a response. We see things get smaller, less in size, or even completely you know, diminish so that we don't even see them on scan. So sensitive meaning that they respond to the platinum-based regimen, and then that's where we can then use a PARP inhibitor for maintenance. Patients who are platinum-resistant, which means that 
their cancer has come back within six months of their primary therapy or their cancer no longer responds to a platinum-based regimen are not considered eligible for PARP inhibitors. What should patients ask their doctors or, or uh, cause let's just suppose it's not brought up because it's sort of new. It, do you have advice to patients how they might bring this conversation up with their, they've heard about, they, they, they listen to this program, uh, they watch this program. Um, what might they say to their doctors about this concept of uh, maintenance therapy? You know, I think the first uh, and very simplest question is, am I a candidate for a PARP inhibitor? Am I a candidate for this therapy? And that's just being inquisitive, being curious about what the therapies are that are out there. So that's, I think, an important question to ask uh, about any treatment that can be available for a patient. But I think asking that question, am I a candidate and why and why not? And making sure that the patient understands, okay, if I'm not a candidate, this is why, or okay, I am a candidate. So now the next discussion is, Let's weigh some pros and cons of this. What are the side effects of the different PARP inhibitors that are approved? And you know how severe do those side effects tend to be? And then what are the potential benefits in terms of months gained? And then where do we weigh that in the balance? And that's where a patient's own values, a patient's own goals of treatment really come into play. So Anya, back to you. So we've already talked about the fact that you have a uh, BRCA mutation. You have not needed it treatment with a, uh, a PARP inhibitor, which is great, but it's out there, and you've obviously done your homework. What's your thought about this class of drugs, new drugs, et cetera? I think the latest advance, PARP inhibitors, is very exciting. And of course, I and my whole family are encouraged and excited that we have still another weapon in the arsenal of this fight. So yes, um, I understand that I might have a recurrence, um, so the next step would be look into one of the PARP inhibitors. It's just great that every year brings new advances in technology. And uh, I'm hopeful that the next year will bring some more effective tools.